Welcome to Violin Adventures number 121. We'll start right off repairing the old cello, taking the cleats down. Okay, we're taking off the clamps on this cello. Okay, I'm just curious how the tone is now that this major crack is closed. Well, the tone is back and I don't hear any, any buzzing. So hopefully all the cracks are closed. I'm gonna take the cleats down now as low as we can. The cleats are down. I'm going to hear the tone again. Okay, and it's really vibrating. I can feel it vibrating in my hand. So, uh, I'm going to check it one more time, check all around to make sure there's no more cracks, and then we can close it up. Okay, I did find one more little crack here on the uh, sound hole. So I'm just gluing it now. I'm gonna clamp that up. So it looks like maybe tomorrow we'll be closing this up. Next, we go on to working on the new violin. Okay, we're back to work on the violin and I had already picked out a bass bar uh, this is half of another bar that I had used earlier, so I'm going to use it in this violin. So as you can see, it's not the right shape at all. So first we have to fit it to the violin and then we'll shape it after it's glued in. I got the shape written on, let's go cut it out. So I'm warming up the glue so that I can close up the cello. And just a note that when I close a cello, I'm going to use older glue um, and I'm going to dilute it so that it's not as strong as the glue when I'm putting in like a base bar. So what I'm doing here is I'm warming up the old glue and I'm making a new batch of glue because I have a base bar that I want to uh, put in. And I need new fresh glue for that. Ready. I want to use a lot of fresh glue when you're making a new violin. Working on the old cello. Also, while that glue is warming up so that I can put the top back on the cello, I am going to put my sealer coat on these new cleats just to protect them. Okay, we have just a little bit of glue left, so I'm going to use that. Hopefully it's enough to get around the top of this cello.
Back to the new violin. Got the peg box started, and now I'm going to go back and work on the scroll. Okay, I've got the fresh glue already made and nice and hot. I'm going to just test it and make sure that it's. I usually test it, and if it'll hold its strength. When I do this quite a few times, then I know it's ready. But if it loses its strength, like on the third or fourth time, then it's not ready. But this is good. So we're ready to go. And some of you were wondering if about how I fit a base bar. I like to get it perfectly fit so that there's no flexing in the plate. And that way the plate is free to vibrate and I really like to use wooden clamps these are nice old wooden clamps there's just something about wood um, like I was talking to a Friend, there's something about wood that it gives um, in ways that metal doesn't. So I think it's much nicer on the violin. <laughs> and besides, they're just beautiful with the beautiful spirals here. Actually, let me show you up close for people have, that haven't seen it. Here's the screw. It's even a wooden screw and just goes in there. There it goes. So we let that set for 24 hours and then we can carve it and shape it and try to get that wonderful tone to just come out. Well, I think it's time to get rid of all these wood chips. We're not going to do any more carving on this violin.
we're going to take the clamps off and get this cello set up. I need to glue in the lower saddle. It looks like we might need to do a little bit of fitting. And then we can get the sound post in. Got the sound post and um, set this up. Should it take too long? The bridge should still be good. So I'll see you as soon as it gets set up. Let's see how the old cello sounds. Okay, we've got it all set up. Now I'm going to play it.
Okay, I'm trying to hear. It's got really nice tone. Do I need to go any further or leave it at that? And just for looks, I need to go a little bit further here, especially up here. Okay, it's a little bit cold outside, so I've got my sweater on, but we've got our base bar finished and got a nice tone up and down. Um, so we're going to stop right here and I'll show you up close. There's the base bar all finished. The Hebrew Minute. Aha! Adonai Hashem Hine Ata Asita Et Hashemaim Va Et Haaretz Bakohacha Hagadol Ubits Roacha Hantuya Lo Yipale Mimaka Kol Debar. So this aha, or can be oh, it's just an introduction interjection O God the Lord or Hashem behold you even you created or made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your stretched out arm and in all things there is nothing too hard or wonderful for you. If you know where this is found, leave it in the comments below. Freddie wants to chat. Hi everybody, I'm Freddie. See, I got, I got my violin and I just wanted to say hi. I just wanted to tell you that that we're making a new violin and we just working on the scroll and, and we're almost ready to close it up. And um, it, it's really cold out here so I have to wear my scarf. See, see, I, I'm wearing my, my scarf because it's cold. Okay, goodbye. See you next time. Well, it's Friday afternoon. It's a little bit on the cold side. So I'm imagining this must be around the 40s, 30s or 40s. And a little bit of wind last night whipping through. So we're going to go on inside and see. Here we are inside where it's nice and warm. And we're coming over to the violin table. We have the bass bar in. And the scroll. I did some more work on that, getting the peg box cut out and a little more shape. Next week we should be able to put the label in, close up the violin, and maybe even start on the purfling. Well, the rest of the shop is all cleaned up and ready to start a new week. Our repairs are off and we have another project coming in. So we'll see how those tables fill up next week. Okay, I have an update on mailing bows. If you were mailing your bow to me for a rehair, we've got an update. You've all been sending them in tubes, which is wonderful, and you're padding the ends, which is great. One more thing to add now, you need to put that tube in a box if you want to save money. It, was be, it will be cheaper to put it in a box than to mail it as the tube um, because it was in a tube and which requires special handling and so they put on a special handling fee which was about $7 more.
tubes and put them in a box. And then there's no special handling fee. I assume because the tube can roll around, they've got to have special handling. So put it in a box and it will still cost the same, which from California to Kentucky is like $14. It turns out for the good because then we'll have double protection in the tube and the box. Thank you so much for watching and for your wonderful comments, your thumbs up, and for subscribing. I really appreciate it. And until next time, God bless you. Bye. Bye.